The Time Shift. Hello and welcome to The Time Shift. This week we're looking at the latest episode of Doctor Who entitled Thin Ice. Now this video is going to be spoiler heavy, so if you haven't seen this episode as of yet, it's time to switch this video off now to avoid any spoilers. But for the rest of us, it's time to dive headfirst into Thin Ice. Wow! <laughs> Okay, so here we are, three episodes into this brand new series, and already we've had this massive twist, this great big development with the series already. I mean, I just didn't see it coming. I know for the past few weeks or so, we've had a bunch of leaks coming out as to certain things that may be happening with the Christmas special, who may or may not have been cast as the new Doctor, as well as the news that John Sims' doc uh, master will be returning at some point in this series. These are all big revelations, and despite that, I think that, thankfully, the BBC were able to keep this week's big twist completely under wraps. This week, we saw the death of Pete. I mean, Pete has been a fantastic companion thus far with his brand new series. He probably in his short period within the series has been probably one of the all-time greatest companions. He's right up there with Adric or Chameleon or her out of Kill the Moon. Truly a character who will live on within the hearts of all Doctor Who fans from now and forevermore. And this show will be a damn dark and a lot more of an unpleasant place without him. So we'll just take a moment to just pay homage to a great and now Soldimus companion. Thank you, Pete. Thank you for being with us. Now, for the rest of the episode itself, I have to say that I did enjoy it, bar the death of Pete. I mean, it is a sad thing to see him just get lost thanks to a tiny, wimey, wibbly wobbly mistake. Just, just Bill stepping on a butterfly, and now he's been erased from the history of the show. I mean, I've been looking online for any kind of reference to him, and now he's just, he's just gone. It's almost as if he never existed before. He's not mentioned on the casting page for IMDb or on the BBC website or even Wikipedia or the Doctor Who wiki itself. He's just, he's gone now. All the great things he did. I mean, I'm sorry to keep going over this, but I'm just, I'm just trying to contextualise that in my mind because aside from that big revelation, there wasn't much else to really talk about with this week's episode. And that's not to say, once again, that it was a terrible episode, but... One in the great scheme of things is going to be one which is, by the end of this series, given some of the leaks and rumours I've heard, maybe one of the more innocuous ones that we get. I have to say that he is by far and away an improvement on what happened last week, at least the final quarter of last week, as this week's episode was consistent. It was a consistently fun episode with some great back and forth between the Doctor and Bill. I have to say that, I, as I said in that opening episode to this year's time shift, that... She is the companion that Peter Capaldi's Doctor always should have had. Someone that really plays off between the two of them. They've got this great chemistry working for one another. And she is almost the perfect companion in the sense that she asks the questions that the audience wants asking, but she does it in her own unique way. And even though they're the same kind of questions that we did asked time and time again as to, oh, Doctor, have, have you killed anybody before? Those kind of questions... Her way of asking them felt genuine, and given the circumstances that were happening within this week's episode, I was willing to go along with that. This was an episode which was consistent in terms of performance that with E had, I will talk about that in greater detail shortly. I have to say though that there were certain moments within it that I did start to get flashbacks to Kill the Moon, particularly at the one moment where, <laughs> where they said, oh, th that moan, it was, it was like a... A moan of moaning depression and sorrow. And I was just thinking to myself, oh great, another story with a sad monster. A monster that's misunderstood that's only killing people because it's in its nature. Oh no, Doctor, will you please save that horrible creature? And then bollock us with a massive rant and a lecture for how horrible human beings are, please. Which he kind of did to a certain degree, but with that said, this episode wasn't as infuriating as Kill the Moon. One of the reasons being is that the big moral dilemma, the big if we do this we're bollocked, if we do this we're bollocked, ultimately was a decision which had no real negative repercussions to it. It was the decision as to whether they should save the monster or not save the monster. 
I'm, I'm still, I'm trying 24 hours after the fact, try and get my head around this big problem. Because there was three possible outcomes that could have happened to the creature. One, somehow during the explosion it got killed. But the explosion wasn't really to kill it. The explosion was just to, you know, rile it up so it would start eating people. So the explosion side of things isn't really going to do anything negative. So don't really need to worry about that kind of thing. So that left us with two other alternatives. Alternative number one is do nothing. Leave it tied up in the chains to, hypothetically speaking, save it at a later day or to save it. So it was pretty much a, we either save the monster or we save the monster situation, which, again, I didn't think was really necessary to have a rant, a big discussion about, it's your race and it's your planet, so that you must now make the decision now, Clara. I mean, I mean, Bill, Bill, this isn't a reoccurring thing for me, palming off my responsibilities to to human beings no 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 it's 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 your decision and i'm gonna do nothing to influence that at all but bearing mind i'm two thousand years old and i've killed a lot of people and i forgot how many i've killed just bear that in mind when you make your decision i mean good grief i am still waiting for the day where he gives a, a human character that moral decision of saving the big misunderstood monster or not and the person choosing the or not option. Because I think that would just, if nothing else, it would make for a great and memorable moment, which I think we desperately needed with this episode in particular. This episode was not a terrible one. I, on Bearing it on its, own me on its own merits and not, as I have done for the past few minutes, look at it in the context of previous episodes, last week's and of course Kill the Moon, it was an episode which I did find to be almost consistently fun. It had a tone to it that I would have thought would have been a little bit more suiting of a Christmas special than necessarily one mid-series, because it is a very light one, it's a episode which does have echoes of classic series Doctor Who, that edge of darkness which has been so sorely lacking from the main series for a very long time. Despite uh, Stephen Moffat's best efforts to bring that back into it, it has not exactly been brought back into it, or we'll discuss that side of things when we have our great big See you later, Stephen Moffat, super duper whoopie de doop special later on this series. But to have that extra element within the show, I did enjoy the fact that we had a child character die was... How do I say this? It doesn't make me sound like some kind of bloodthirsty psychopath. It was a refreshing change. No, that doesn't work, does it? It, was, it? it was a novel twist. I'll say that it was a novel twist because... More often than not, it, that doesn't happen. It never happens. You don't kill the child and you don't kill the dog. Boomer must live or whatever the joke is from the Nostalgia Critic, which I don't remember because it's been like 10 years since I watched an episode of his stuff. But you get the idea. It's one of those big no-nos of things that you do. Generic junk, drunk man stumbling about fine kill him but don't kill the child with the Paddington bear hat on it was an episode that was a bit too black and white it was an episode where her bad guy was not a clean character he was distinctly evil and horrible and I'm a little bit in two minds over that I have been wanting to have a human bad guy in Doctor Who for quite a while now someone who is just a human being who is evil who is a bad guy but is not evil or bad because they're subservient to an alien race or because they've been corrupted by some kind of alien hypno mcguffin thing it's just them being a complete and utter cock which was definitely the case with the character this week but he was a character that was a little bit too <laughs> Oh, I'm going to be evil now. Oh, I've said a racist thing. Oh, now you definitely know I'm evil and human. Because apparently only human beings can be racist. <laughs> Which I wasn't terribly keen on. I would have at least liked a little bit more depth to him. But at the end of the day, he's a throwaway villain and ultimately throwaway episode. So we don't need to really worry about that kind of thing. Anyway, as the episode as a whole, just to summarise this section, because there's not a great deal else to say, fine, enjoyable, good, no real main problems with it. The only issues I have with it are, I dare say, historical or possibly practical or probably in the reality of things, personal 
grievances I have with the episode. Mostly from the fucking diving suits, let's be honest. Those things are supposed to be big, heavy monstrosities that need a team of people to work. Yet the Doctor and Bill were able to use them on their own and rise up and out of the water without needing assistance. Okay. I suppose that was just done for the sake of it, so we could have the moment underwater where Bill freaks out when she sees the monster and finds little shitheads hat in her hand and then goes, Ah, oh, Doctor, you've got to save the day! So that was fine, good, and I think that for a Frost Fair, I, there was a distinct lack of people actually at the fair, but again, that's probably down to casting issues at the moment, but, you know, whatever. It was fine, enjoyable, good. Let us now dive into the performance section. Okay, so the performance section of this week's episode, Pika Polly as the Doctor was fine, enjoyable, good. This was a nice episode to see him interacting with uh, child characters, but in a way which was neither creepy or effectively like him doing a Matt Smith impression, as was the case in The Forest of Midnight. He was fine, enjoyable, good, great as always. There were no moments within it which had me questioning his character or things that he said. It was enjoyable. Bill again was enjoyable, but I think that the moments where she's outraged and shocked by something, it, it's not always landing for me. The moment where the child dies, I think that it wasn't performed quite to par with the rest of the performance that Pearl Mackey does. And this is the second episode in a row where she's had the... <gasps> oh, a moment! And she's a new character... And I imagine that we're going to have an epi a moment like that with pretty much every single episode from now until the end of the series. Which may be the reason why she leaves it, if she is going to leave it. Of course, now we're getting conflicting reports as to whether she's going to leave it or not. Personally, I think that she should leave it after the first series. Not because I dislike her. Not at all. I think she's fantastic and she probably is one of my favourite companions that we've had in this brand new run of Doctor Who. And I dare say that she's starting to go up the list into being one of my all-time favourites, including the classic series, which really say something given the quality of some of those companions. I do think she's a fantastic character. She is a fan uh, Pearl Mac is a fantastic actor. However, I feel that these moments where she's shocked and outraged and are a little bit not quite hitting the mark for me. Personally, you yourself may disagree. As for the other performances within the episodes, the child actors were fine for what little that we that they had I found that they were game going back to what I said in the previous link that our main bad guy was a little bit too mustache twirling that some of his decisions didn't always make sense like ah we've been rumbled these two people know about the thing let's kill them in a very extravagant and ostentatious way let's not kill them here and now let us Put them in a situation that they could quite easily escape, even with the methods and techniques and technologies of this age in which we live. Yes, he doesn't need a, a fancy sonic screwdriver that looks terrible this series. No, 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 no. He just needs to do a thing and he'd be out. And it was fine. And he got out. And he was kind of poorly performed. I think there was a little bit too soon, though, for him to get punched in the face by the Doctor. I know that makes a great bit for the trailer and a great, way fuck you, racism bit, but needed a bit more. Maybe we needed a bit more in the episode of him being an arsehole towards black people or something, or just mere moments and just general racism, so that we can then have the moment where he gets punched in the face. Or don't have the punch in the face in the, at all, and then the real punch in the face is when he gets gobbled up by the by the giant Cthulhu anglerfish monster thing. Which I'm glad just didn't turn into another moment like Kill the Moon where there was some kind of big dilemma to it like, Oh Doctor, if the monster is released then it will sprout legs and arms and then it will go around London gobbling people up. We know this for a genuine fact as it is a... 
Larian, and they are known for doing such things. Oh, call blimey. But if we kill it, then we will kill the last of its kind, and that would be naughty. Let's ask the audience at home, push your purple button and vote now. Do we commit genocide of a singular being? Or do we consider genocide of the entire London race? Vote now. Oh. Thank you. We didn't get anything quite like that. I don't know where any of that came from. So I think that's a good enough reason, as any, to go into the overview. And now the overview. What do I think of the episode as a whole? Fine. At the end of the day, fine. Ultimately, that's all it is, because it didn't leave a lasting impression upon me. I dare say it won't leave a lasting impression of me full stop, either positive or negative, despite the fact that it did to a fair few things, in my humble opinion, correctly. That it didn't try to make out that its story was bigger and greater than it actually is. It was a nice small-scale story that was enjoyable. It didn't always hit the mark. I dare say that the angle of talking about racism and slavery was something that was a little bit underutilised, but I suppose that they didn't want to make an episode that was that heavy. Maybe this is a recurring thing, because now this is the second episode in a row where we've had something to do with slavery or racism. Well, I don't think we'll get that next week, as next week, David Sushef is here. Yeah, that short man who plays Hercule Poirot, who kind of looks like a, a human version of a panda. He's, he's back! Well, he's never been here to begin with, but he's here as a creepy old man who lures students into his house, then his house eats them. In an episode which has odd recollections of an episode that I don't remember the name of. I think it was called the one with the man who was actually not a man. He was a son, man, and a guy that was a lizard with no eyes, I think. Seventh Doctor episode's got really fucking tenuous. <laughs> anyway, what did you think about this week's episode? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Mess me in the box below and I will get back to you either in a follow-up video or directly if you shall wish. And be sure to like, fave and subscribe to us because that's a thing that people do and if you've enjoyed this episode then why not do that? Because it would be nice. Smash that like button, if you can, or not, I don't know. I'm just, I'm still in a sore mood after the death of Pete. I mean, it's really weird. It's almost as if, as if he never existed in the first place, but I, I vividly remember him. He, he had blonde hair, no, brown hair, and he... Had a funny episode where he was riding on a T-Rex.